Hello and welcome to the Redwood City 2021 Redistricting Community Outreach Workshop. Uh, this is the uh, Redwood City uh, logo. Um, we are really excited to have you join us for this process and work together with the Advisory Redistricting Committee, the City Council, um, and staff. This is the um, outline of your city, of Redwood City, with the current City Council District lines. Um, so here is where we're starting. This is what uh, was decided using the 2010 data, uh, but we are using the 2020 census data for the 2021 redistricting process. So these maps uh, will be changing um, throughout the process. The agenda for today, we're going to cover a few things. We're going to talk about the redistricting basics. We'll go over the advisory redistricting committee. We'll talk about the timeline for the Redwood City redistricting process. We'll also discuss the traditional redistricting principles, and we're really going to get into the concept of communities of interest. It's a criteria that under the new law, the California Fair Maps Act, uh, puts a big emphasis on this and is why uh, Redwood City has done so many outreach hearings and um, why we are uh, discussing this process. So we're going to talk about that more in depth. We have a video that talks about the map tool, which is Districtor, where we give a demonstration. And we're also going to talk about ways that the community can give feedback on communities of interest. And then finally, we have the hearing schedule uh, that the public can see and are welcome to join um, all the meetings that we have coming up. So what is redistricting? Redistricting is the process of adjusting district lines every 10 years after the release of the U.S. Census. Some of the well-known examples are congressional and state legislative districts. Here in California, the California, um, California has an independent redistricting commission, which will be drawing congressional, state uh, assembly and senate lines, and, but that varies state by state. But local governments must also go through this redistricting process as well. And that's why we're here uh, with Redwood City. So Redwood City must also go through this process to ensure the city council districts are rebalanced um, after the 2020 census. But beyond creating districts of equal population, redistricting also serves to empower local communities and preserve voting rights. The Advisory Redistricting Committee is a committee that was appointed by the City Council and we have a one person per district, so District 1 through 7, and we also have a couple of committee members who are at large. Some members of the Advisory Redistricting Committee you may also hear it referred to as ARC or capital A-R-C have been a part of the outreach hearings from the very beginning, and we've had a number of them attend all of the workshops. So it's been wonderful to see them, have them be engaged with the public, ask questions during the outreach phase, and really get engaged to hear what members of the public have had to say. Some structure of the committee. Again, the committee was appointed by the city council, to assist in conducting community outreach and recommending a new city council district map. The goals of the ARC are to conduct community outreach hearings, to identify communities of interest from the public, and also to draft new city council maps from community of interest input, and also to recommend a map or a set of maps to the city council um, to consider. We've been in phase two, of which is our community workshop phase. We've done by districts, so we've done one workshop per district, and then we also did a citywide workshop on October 9th. Um, this phase was a phase for the advisory redistricting committee to listen to members of the public, to get feedback, uh, for them to use the community of interest mapping tool, to send in surveys online, and to really have their voice be heard during uh, this process. And again, it was a process that began in August, and we um, finalized that on October 9th. 
However, throughout the entire phase, members of the public can form, come forward, give testimony, either by emailing the city, by sending in um, a community of interest survey, by attending an advisory redistricting committee meeting, or also by, send, by attending a city council meeting. So even though we're moving out of phase two and into phase three, that doesn't stop the opportunity for the public to come forward and give testimony. So the traditional redistricting principles, these are principles that are here to help city councils uh, to draw lines for fair representation. There are a number of criteria that have been used nationally and upheld by courts. Uh, there are ranked criteria order. This is the criteria that is in, in the Fair Maps Act and one that we will be using moving forward. So the first uh, criteria is creating districts of relatively equal size. And when we talk about that, we are talking about people, not citizens. The, we're using uh, the census data as uh, the base for drawing our district maps for our redistricting process. And when we talk about census data, not, we're not only discussing and talking about the total population number, but we're also talking about census geography. So we'll see in the districtor demonstration and in the place map that the base geography for the redistricting process for Redwood City will be the census blocks. And the census blocks are the smallest unit of geography that we receive data from the Census Bureau. Now, a number of people may be familiar with census tracts if you were involved in the 2020 Census Outreach Project, which we know a lot of members of Redwood City were a part of. And that is a larger geography uh, census um, data. So it starts from census blocks, goes to census block groups, and then to census tracts. So again, when we're talking about census data and creating districts of relatively equal size, we're talking about people, we're talking about census data, and uh, for districtor and the placemats, we are talking about census blocks. The second criteria is contiguous. So creating districts that don't hop or jump over one another, that geographically are touching one another um, and are a whole single district. Maintaining communities of interest is a concept we're gonna go really in depth in the next couple of slides, but it's highlighted here, it's highlighted throughout this process because again, we have that new law called the California Fair Maps Act, which puts a large emphasis on community outreach on transparency, on hearing from the public. Um, so we are really excited for members of the public to understand that concept and to give feedback. The next criteria is following city, county, or local government lines. So those could be additional data sets that the members of the public, that the ARC or that the council would like to be considered while drawing maps. Um, in the district or right now, we're cons they have a later layer for school districts and for neighborhood councils. So those are uh, examples of additional lines that are being considered. And the final principle is to create districts that keep districts compact, and that could be in appearance or in function. So if you look at a district and it looks compact, that could be a way to follow that criteria. And another way is in appearance So if or in function. So if there is a boundary, if there is a, a county unincorporated area or another barrier um, that make it difficult for Redwood City residents to function or move through districts as a highway, a park, or another boundary, um, that could maybe mean that it doesn't functionally make sense to have a line in a certain area. But in California, we have a rather elegant way to think about compactness, and that is to um, create districts that don't bypass nearby population for faraway population. So creating districts that keep in mind the population around you, it doesn't move and go to another area and grab population. Another thing to keep in mind is just because there are districts that have a funny shape, doesn't necessarily mean that they have been gerrymandered. Again, we're looking at this in a ranked criteria order, and the ARC may 
would may want to keep a community or neighborhood together and by doing so may have to create a district that looks a little funny. So again, these are um, a lot of criteria that the ARC and the council will have to consider. And, and so we um, just have a lot that we need to think about and they need to think about throughout this process. So communities of interest is a term that we really only hear once a decade. But at its core, what it means is that we understand that residents of Redwood City are experts of your community, that you uh, live there, you work there, you recreate in the city, you understand the nuances of the cities, of the neighborhoods, of business districts, of parks. And so communities of interest is a term and a, and a criteria that understands your experience and how it's tied to the redistricting process. But it, it's in a way where the ARC and the council can then consider your testimony during this process. It's about bringing like-minded people together for representation. They really are the building blocks of districts and why we've had these outreach hearings and really wanna hear from the public. And communities of interest can include a wide variety of examples. Um, they can include cultural and language minority groups and just a lot of other groups. Because we're talking about narrative pieces and how people experience and move beyond the city of Redwood City, we want to remember that they are subjective. And we want folks who are on the call, who are listening, a part of the committee and a part of the council and staff to remember to remain open-ended and as inclusive as possible as we're listening to testimony. We may hear competing testimony, we may hear um, some conflict in the testimony, but that will be something for the ARC to discuss when they're looking at drafting maps. And again, these hearings are here to listen and to ask questions of the public. Some communities that are covered by the Voting Rights Act uh, under race and ethnicity are Latinos, Asians, and African Americans. Those are some of a, cu a couple of ethnic groups. And while we wanna and know that race can be a community of interest, it cannot be the predominant factor in drawing districts unless we are drawing a Voting Rights Act district under, under Section 2, and we will talk with legal counsel if we, are, um, if we need to draw a Voting Rights Act district after we look at the data. Uh, so again, we understand that race is something that a lot of people identify with as a community of interest, and the following slides will help you think through additional ways where you can think of your community beyond race. So again, race uh, cannot be the predominant factor in drawing districts unless we are drawing a Section 2 Voting Rights Act district. So some examples of communities of interest could be historical communities, could be geographic features in an area, neighborhoods, school districts, renters uh, versus homeowners, I was in a meeting a couple of weeks ago where we heard seven hours of testimony on a rent control ordinance, where we heard testimony, really passionate testimony from renters, from homeowners, uh, from tenants, from landlords. And that was a wonderful example of competing communities of interest and passion between uh, two different areas. Um, so that's testimony that we could hear throughout the process. And again, that's testimony that the ARC will consider as they are drafting their maps. So it's important to know that under this process for the 2021 redistricting process for the city of Redwood City, there's also some things that are not a community of interest under that new law, the Fair Maps Act. You can also look it up as AB 849, and it explicitly prohibits a couple of groups from being considered as communities of interest and those are political party affiliation, incumbency, and political candidates. So while we understand that it is the right of residents for the city of Redwood City to come forward and give testimony to those who represent you, it's the job of the ARC and the city council to also follow state and federal laws while they're going through their redistricting process. So they can listen to all testimony and will listen to all testimony that has come forward by residents and members of the public. However, they will be disallowed from considering political party affiliation, 
incumbency and political candidates while they are discussing draft maps or finalizing a final plan. It's also difficult in redistricting to consider communities of interest that are citywide. Because we are talking about creating seven districts in the city of Redwood City, it's difficult to have and consider a community of interest that is citywide. So if you come forward and are, and are thinking that your community is the entire city, we employ you to think about if there are sections of the city that you relate to or multiple sections of the city, you can definitely come forward and give testimony on multiple communities of interest. But again, because we are talking about um, beginning the process of looking at draft maps and finalizing a plan, a community that is citywide will be difficult to consider in this process. So some things to help you think about your community of interest testimony and come forward to the ARC or the city council. These three questions are here to serve you and to assist you as you're gonna give your testimony. So the first thing to think about is, does the community, does your community have a shared culture, characteristic or bond? And this is a great question to ask again if you wanna come forward and are innately thinking that you want to come forward with race as your communities of interest, if there are additional things beyond race that you consider to keep your community together, this is a question to think about. The other thing, the second one, is to ask yourself, what is the geography of my community? Can it be mapped? Is it able to be mapped? This one is really important if you're coming forward with verbal or written testimony uh, because we want to hear if you can give us street names or specific locations or boundaries or highways, that'd be really helpful uh, because we will not be mapping uh, written or verbal testimony because we don't want to misinterpret what a member of the public has come forward to say. You do have the opportunity to use district or the mapping tool to submit a place map, which is a, a paper map or to submit another map on a napkin or a piece of paper, you can definitely do that. But if you wanna come forward with verbal or written testimony, it'd be really helpful to give us the specific geography of the area that you're discussing so that we can consider it in this process. The third question to think about is how would you describe your community's relationship with the jurisdiction and how it is affected by policy decisions made by elected officials? So in this instance, we're thinking about the Redwood City City Council. So how does your community relate to the Redwood City um, City Council? Are you currently split up into multiple neighbor or multiple districts? Are you currently together in a particular district? And how does that benefit you either negatively or positively? So we want you to think about that coming forward because we are talking about representation, and we are talking about a final map. So now that we've talked about communities of interest in a conceptual way, we've given you some examples. We've uh, told you about the new law and what's prohibited from being considered as a community of interest. And we've also given you some questions to think about. So this portion of the presentation is a little quiz that you can think about to yourself, ask your neighbors or um, people around you, and have a discussion around these. So the first question, and I kind of discussed this a little bit earlier in the presentation, and the first one is, a group of renters who live downtown testify to the city's redistricting commission. Do you believe that this could be considered as a community of interest? So could renters be considered as a community of interest for the city of Redwood City? Absolutely, this group of residents can easily be mapped, they're in a distinct area, and they share common policy interests that can be addressed through legislation or public services. We've seen this one be a community of interest through a lot of other jurisdictions, and folks have come forward to testify. And again, we can hear competing communities of interest, that's something that we have heard and uh, potentially will continue to hear, but this is a wonderful example of a community of interest group that can come forward. The second question, a group of neighborhoods on the eastern side of the city that are susceptible to flooding. 
would this collection of neighborhoods be considered as a community of interest? So think about that for a little bit. Absolutely, yes. This group of residents, again, can easily be mapped. They're in a distinct area and they share a common policy interest which can, which can be addressed through legislation. So I do wanna address that this community of interest is could be multiple neighborhoods. Uh, it could be a singular location or it could be a larger portion of the city. Um, this is a community of interest that we've heard testimony about throughout the outreach process and is one that des definitely is unique to the area and to that neighborhood. So again, you can come forward with multiple communities of interest. They can, they can be varied across the city, interest in how again you navigate through the city. The third one, we're going in a different direction here. A group of business owners with a focus on ensuring there's ample parking, clean streets, and consistent police patrols around throughout the central business district. Could this business district or this group of business owners be considered as a community of interest? We'll let you think about that for a little bit. If you're thinking yes, then absolutely yes. This is a group who share um, geographic location, they have similar needs, they have similar uh, public service needs, uh, they you know, care about their businesses and folks who come to use their businesses to um, feel secure. Again, this week we had uh, some competing communities of interest when we were listening throughout the outreach process, but a group of business owners who are concerned with their area can definitely be considered as a community of interest and they can come forward and testify to the ARC. So again, we're going in another direction with this example. And this one is a statewide group for people who are fans of the San Francisco Giants testify to the local city redistricting commission. Would this be considered as a community of interest? Would a statewide group of fans of the San Francisco Giants be considered as a community of interest? For this instance, it, it does not. Um, so it's important that a community of interest is distinct enough to draw on a map. This group overlaps throughout the entire state and it is unlikely that a governing agency has any say over these issues. So if we think about this in another way though, if there is an adult recreation baseball league that comes forward and testifies to the, um, to the advisory redistricting committee or the city and say that they would like to use public services, they would like for there to be more lights at the baseball park because it is getting darker, a water fountain, that could make sense as a community of interest for the city of Redwood City redistricting process. And so again, a statewide group doesn't make sense for the process because again, we're talking about Redwood City and what the city council has a say over, but an adult league or another recreation league could make sense for this process. So I hope that little quiz kind of got you thinking about what you would like to come forward as your community of interest testimony. And there's a wide variety of ways that you can come forward and give your testimony to the advisory redistricting commission um, and the city council. One of those ways is to submit a community of interest form. You can find this on the website. This is a, a worksheet that's on the website. The Redwood City redistricting website is very user-friendly, very clear where all the information is. You can also click on the link here for the online form. Throughout the process, the ARC and the City Council are looking for two types of map submissions. The first one was community of interest maps that were being collected at the beginning of the process until October. And so those are available on the district or website and as a place map map. The second one, which is, is up right now, is district based base plans based on 2020 data. And we have the 2020 data up on the district or website, which can be used to submit plans. Um, the ARC is currently looking for members of the public to come forward to submit plans. And again, we gave a 
district or demonstration on that, that can, you can refer to that um, to look into that. We are looking for district-based plans until the end and final adoption of this process. And so you're welcome to submit those now between the end of the process. Districter is the online mapping tool that the city of Redwood City has gone with to use as their online mapping platform. It is a platform that is based out of Tufts University, and there are a number of municipalities across the state and across the country who are utilizing Districter as their online mapping tool. So it's really important that if you would like to come forward to use Districter to submit community of interest maps or district-based maps to really use the specific Redwood City link um, because again, there are folks across the country who are using Districter for their redistricting process. And again, you can find the Redwood City specific Districter link on the website um, and you can click on it right there and submit your map right away. There's also a plate, what we call place maps, which are large uh, paper maps uh, which you can download on the website. You can also pick up at City Hall and you can also pick up at all of the libraries in the city of Redwood City. Um, additionally, for districter assistance, you can go to the main library at the city of Redwood City across from City Hall to get additional advice or utilize the computers there. And we just wanna put more emphasis on those three questions to assist you throughout your process of giving testimony. And again, those are, does your community have a shared culture, characteristic, or bond? And then to ask yourself, what is the geography of your community? Can it be mapped? And finally, what is your community's relationship to the city council of Redwood City? And how are you affected by policy decisions that city council members make. This is the um, Redwood City Advisory Redistricting Committee timeline for workshops. So again, we began the outreach workshop um, meetings in August, uh, August 25th. We went all through September. We had them on Wednesday evenings and Saturday mornings at different times and we did them throughout the entire city, so by district, and then we did a citywide workshop in Spanish. So how can you help throughout this process? You can take that community of interest survey, you can start drawing district-based maps and districter, you can share the workshop flyers with your neighborhoods and your, your family. Um, we have the advisory redistricting uh, committee meetings coming up and you can, all of this information is on the Redwood City redistricting webpage. Again, it's very user-friendly. All of the information is on there, updates, past meetings, past presentations, notes. It's a really wonderful resource if you are looking forward to being a part of this process. So we wanna thank you. Thank you for joining us, um, listening to this presentation and we look forward to seeing your maps and to seeing you at the next meeting.